Hi, I'm Pat Brown. I'm the founder and CEO of Impossible Food. This guy knows what it is to be healthy and save the world. Look at that. Look at those eyes. I trust this man. I trust those beady little muskrat eyes and that strangely moving plastic looking tight ass mouth. I, I trust that face. I trust this man. Foods. And I'm here to talk to the scientists and engineers of the world. If you're like me, you went into science because you love hard problems. If you're like me, you went into science because your dad was in the CIA and, uh, and he pushed you in that direction. He got you into Stanford University and actually got you a job at Stanford. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, that's why you do it. And there's nothing more rewarding than working on the most challenging and important problems you can find. And this is it. Our mission at Impossible Foods is to completely replace the use of animals as a food production technology. And what that will accomplish is this. It will enable us to reverse the catastrophic collapse of global biodiversity. Turn back but, the... But remember, they're using GMO. They're using Monsanto GMO soy as a main ingredient in this, right? It's like canola oil, soy oil. It's all these massive monocropped mega crops. Right? This, this company... Impossible Foods only has 9,000 subscribers on YouTube. They've got billions of dollars of capital. Only 748 people have seen this stupid-ass video. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that people don't really want this. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because they'll just push it. They'll just force it. They've got billions of dollars of capital. They've got billions of dollars of capital. They have massive influence massive influence they've got guys like Pat Brown Pat Brown they've got Harvard University uh, Walter Willett always pushing this plant based diet stuff so you've got Pat Brown international jet setter Here's a quote from him. Here's a quote from Pat Brown from Impossible Foods. And he was an intelligence officer, I guess you could say. And um, Wait, here you go. Here it is. my dad uh, worked for the CIA. I didn't realize that until I was quite a bit older. And um, his job sent me to various overseas posts. Um, so we lived in Paris for four years. Um, that's where I started school. And then came back to the States, and then he was sent to uh, Taipei. Was he a spy, or was he more of a sort of a desk? Um... I mean, he was an intelligence officer, I guess you could say, and um, was gathering intelligence on uh, mainland China and ran various operations. But he never did any, you know, sketchy, bad business. So he is the sweetest, most altruistic yeah. guy. He was like... The opposite of what you, if you have this notion of, you know, the CIA and spies being mm -hmm. very sinister yeah. and unethical characters is the dead opposite of that. So when, when you were a kid, what did you think your dad did? Well, I, it's, I'm, it's embarrassing in a way. I mean, he would just say, you know, when I asked him what he did, he'd say, oh, I, you know, I work for the government. And I thought, okay, that makes sense, works for the government. I only found out uh, what his real job was when one of my good buddies somehow mentioned that his dad worked for the CIA, and I thought, well, that's kind of weird because he, he works for my dad. <laughs> and, uh, anyway. And yes, I, I trust this, I, I trust him, right? Like, this is somebody we can trust. He does he, the science. The science is behind him, right? He wants to save the world. You know, his, his dad, working with the CIA in mainland China, ran various operations, but he never knew he did. He was going back and forth. Where is Taipei? Is Taipei in China? Where is Taipei? So, so there you go. Now, this has nothing to do with what Pat Brown's doing now. I just think it's good, like that his father served our great nation um, in in Taiwan. I guess Taipei's in Taiwan is this danger field. I'm I'm just happy that he served our great nation, that he helped to um, to help our nation, help our freedom. And so his dad was. Working in mainland China as an intelligence officer for the CIA, 
He didn't even tell Patrick Brown. He didn't even know until one of his friends told him, yeah, my dad works for the CIA. He's like, wait, my dad, your dad works for my daddy. Oh, my daddy's CIA too? We can trust this guy though, right? We can trust him. From Stanford. He's from Stanford. He's a Stanford guy. Nothing sketchy ever goes on at Stanford. Or the CIA. Or both together. <laughs> I, I mean, to me, this is just, it's pretty unbelievable. Um, but it is true. Come over here and chat and see what you guys got to say. What you guys have to say? You guys going to be eating the Impossible Burger from Pat Brown? You want to help him get rid of, want to help him get rid of animal agriculture? <laughs> no thanks. No thanks. We're going to keep eating real food. We're going to keep nourishing ourselves. And we can't let these people, first of all, we can't let these people scare us, guilt us, shame us, and gaslight us into feeling guilty and ashamed for providing food for our families, and for living a healthy lifestyle, for living a rural lifestyle. These people want to make you feel ashamed for not eating their slop, for not moving in their smart cities. Oh, they're so advanced. They're so sciencey. You guys are just science deniers. You want to eat the Impossible Burger? You're a science denier. We can't let them gaslight us into this shit. But also, we, we really do. We have to expose these people for what they're doing. Right? The, <laughs> these people like Patrick Brown, Impossible Foods, or people like Klaus Schwab, these people need to be exposed for who they are, for what they are. These huge companies that are actually creating more environmental devastation and destruction than most people understand. These, pe these companies that are actually destroying the soil, they're telling you that their Monsanto, that their Monsanto Roundup Ready fake soylent slop is going to save the planet. Right? While they're destroying the planet, they're the ones who are responsible for all this environmental devastation and destruction. They want to tell you they're going to save you. They'll make you healthier. With their GMOs, like their fake GMO soy hemoglobin, they call it leg hemoglobin. It's a fake, it's a fake hemoglobin that's modified from GMO soybeans, uh, soybeans, right? GMO soy, already modified, then modified into like a fake heme, fake heme iron, that in animal studies didn't fare very well. These these people want to feed you this crap. <laughs> Instead of real foods, a bunch of monocropped, pesticide soaked, I'm sorry, pesticide fortified <laughs> kibble. Because that's going to save the planet. Everything else is bad. Real food bad, fake food good. The use of animals as a food production technology. And what that will accomplish is this it will enable us to reverse the catastrophic collapse of global biodiversity, turn back the clock on climate change, and We're actually- We're gonna make more biodiversity by destroying all your heritage crops and making you grow GMO, soy, and corn. Hmm. They change the way Earth looks from space. To understand how it's possible, look at a movie of the burning Amazon. More than 90% of the Amazon- <laughs> look, look at this picture of something burning. <laughs> look, the whole Amazon's dying by Impossible Burger. Look, look, the Amazon's burning. Impossible Burgers will make this stop. <laughs> this is, what a joke. What a joke. On deforestation is and has been driven by- By soybean production. And guess what? Guess what, the part of the soy that goes to the cattle is inedible to human beings. These people misrepresent all of these stats. The demand for land for animal agriculture. Just some nice cows. Culture. Over the past 200 years, 45% of Earth's surface has been turned from its original natural state to animal agriculture. There's a, a, so many lies right here. We, we don't even have time to fact check all your lies. <laughs> but let's keep going. The difference it's so in bad. Bio it's so bad. Biomass. Biomass. Just like just like the World Economic Forum said, right? The biomass. Mass on the land due to animal agriculture is equivalent to about 15 years worth of fossil fuel emissions. So <laughs> this, this, 
this crazy moral calculus they're constantly doing. Look at the bugs behind them. They've got the bugs behind Just as a reminder, we want you to eat bugs. At least there's, there's one crab. But we want you to eat bugs. Look at that cockroach. You can eat that cockroach. That's good for you. What we're going to do effectively is take that movie of the burning Amazon and run it in reverse and do the same for the hypothetical movie of deforestation of all the other parts of the world that are now covered by cows. Does it bother you that in the Paris Climate Accord, representatives of countries around the world signed on to commit- Signed on to commit mass genocide and the destruction of the poor and the erection of a global totalitarian carbon credit system and the complete takeover and financialization of all of nature by people like me. Commitments that accept a 1.5 degrees Celsius rise in global oh. average temperatures. Oh. That is absolutely insane. Completely. We cannot accept any changes in temperatures. <laughs> We have to control temperatures of everything. This is, it's, it's such pseudoscience nonsense. I can't, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I've, I've been studying this climate scam since 2009 at least. It was, it, was it 2008 or 2009 when the IPCC scandal happened, the climate gate scandal, or it was shown that they were manipulating data. The fact that they that people buy into this stuff, I mean, just the repetition, the constant repetition, is uh, it's kind of staggering. It's pretty amazing how many people buy this shit. But um, you know, people still aren't. They don't want to buy your impossible shit. Impossible Burger fails to inspire trust in GMO industry. For anyone who wonders why consumers aren't inspired to trust the GMO industry, this is an article at USRTK. Dot org by Stacy Malkin. She says, for anyone who wonders why consumers aren't inspired to trust the GMO industry, consider this the bizarre rant from Impossible Foods Chief Communications Officer Rachel Conrad in defense of the Impossible Burger, a veggie burger made more meat-like via genetically engineered yeast. Conrad was upset that a story in Bloomberg raised concerns about the insufficient research, lack of regulation, and poor transparency for genetically engineered food technologies. So Conrad took to Medium, blasting critics of the Impossible Burger as, quote, anti-science fundamentalists, and, quote, setting the record straight with information she sourced from chemical industry front groups and other unreliable anti-consumer messengers who regularly con uh, communicate inaccurate information about science. So... Anybody who disagrees with me who doesn't want to buy my, uh, my uh, shitty-ass product is an anti-science, fundamentalist, nutcase, non-entity subhuman. <laughs> this is, that's their messaging. Bloomberg is not a trusted source of reporting on science, according to Conrad, because the American Council on Science and Health says so. The ACSH is a corporate front group that solicits money from tobacco, chemical, and pharmaceutical companies to defend pesticides, e-cigs, cosmetics, and other toxic products that aren't likely to win over the vegan crowd. Instead of enduring the bias of Bloomberg, Conrad tells us we should take heart in the rise of Mark Linus, a promoter of GMOs and pesticides who communicates inaccurate information about science, according to scientists and food experts. Mark Linus works for the Cornell Alliance for Science, <laughs> a public relations campaign to promote GMOs. Funded primarily by the Gates Foundation. Gates is also an investor in the Impossible Burger. The mis and he's also invested in Beyond Meat. Um, the misleading messaging these groups use to promote genetically engineered foods, defend pesticides, ignore health and environmental risks, and silence consumer and environmental advocates goes a long way towards explaining why the GMO industry isn't winning consumer trust. Impossible Foods had a chance to turn a new leaf. Up to now, most GMO foods have been engineered to survive the spraying of weed-killing chemicals, glyphosate, and now also dicamba. Dicamba, that, that's even worse than glyphosate. Dicamba is so freaking bad. These, these are the companies who are poisoning us. These are the companies causing all the cancer. These are the companies destroying your soil, destroying your children's guts, destroying your health. But then they're going to sell you the fake solution to all of this. Isn't this insane? And soon also 2,4-D, I don't know what that one is, I haven't heard of that, I guess that's like a dicamba, a modified dicamba or something, who knows what kind of genocidal 
chemicals are coming out soon. Uh, and what environmental groups call the GMO pesticide treadmill. But the GMO industry is changing with the emergence of new techniques such as CRISPR and synthetic biology. It's one of the first food companies out with a GM food product that may actually offer consumer benefits if one likes bleeding veggie burgers. No. Nobody wants that shit. Impossible Foods is the opportunity to write a new story, to build trust with an open, transparent process that respects consumer concerns. They blew it. <laughs> uh, we are supposed to trust the manufacturer to vouch for the safety of the Impossible Burger's new genetically engineered protein, which is new to the human food supply. We've never eaten this protein before, folks. Brand new. Brand new. But the company's process hasn't inspired trust. Their GMO heme ingredient is, quote, super safe, according to the Impossible Foods website. Conrad explains in Medium, an objective third-party team of the nation's top food researchers unanimously concluded in 2014 that the Impossible Burger's key ingredient, soy leg hemoglobin, produced by a genetically engineered yeast, is generally recognized as safe. The panel made this conclusion in 2014, well before we began selling the Impossible Burger on the market in 2016. She left out the important facts. The New York Times reported last August when the US FDA raised concerns that the studies Impossible Foods presented in the Gross notification were inadequate to establish safety. The company withdrew its petition but put the burger on the market anyway. That was within their rights but not a way to establish confidence in their product. So this is how much the FDA loves you. And the USDA, they just love you so much. They let them put out GM foods that have never been tested on humans or animals into your food supply. And if you don't like it, you're an anti-science zealot idiot.